If you're anything like me, you've watched countless videos of your favourite creators getting an abandoned classic car like this, bringing it back to life and driving off into the sunset. <laughs> It always looks like the most fun. So I want to answer the simple question. How hard is it for us regular folk to do the same thing? To find out, I bought this, a 1962 Jaguar Mark 10 from eBay, sight unseen, and it hasn't run in 15 years. But straight off the bat, I wanna show you something that has got me very, very concerned. Can you notice anything that might be missing? Anything at all? Shout when you see it, I'll give you a hint. The entire inlet manifold and the carbs. All good. I've got absolutely no idea how long any of this has been off the car. Maybe the full 15 years that this car has been sitting. But what it means is that all of these ports and the internals of the engine have just been completely open to the elements. I don't know how much moisture might have gotten in there and potentially seized this engine. This isn't good. The first thing we need to do is we need to work out if this engine actually is seized. And a quick note to say, I'm at home on my driveway. I have a selection of basic tools. I have the service manual from the 60s itself, and I have puppy levels of enthusiasm for the task at hand. Woof. Oh, and I've also fully loaded <laughs> the parts cannon. Boom. So I need to turn this engine over by hand to see if it's seized. Now in an ideal world, you'd pull the spark plugs out and you'd put a bit of penetrant down the spark plug holes, let that sink in for a little while and then give it a turn. However, if you can see in here, that is not looking good. I mean, look at all of the junk that's in there, that's rust. I am absolutely terrified that these spark plugs are gonna be absolutely seized in there. I mean, look at that one there. What I don't wanna do right at the start here is to just hammer on these and then snap them all off in the cylinder head. But what I am gonna do instead is I've got my penetrant here and I'm just gonna square a load basically into the ports there. Some of the valves in this cylinder head I'm hoping <laughs> are gonna be open and we can get kind of just enough of this in there just to make a little bit of a difference. And so what we need to do first, obviously, is just check, check we've got oil. And you can see that we do indeed have oil. And that doesn't actually look too bad at all. Doesn't seem to be any water or anything in there. Okay, that's good news. All right, so I just want to see now if I can get onto the crank bolt. So apparently on this engine, it's a three quarter inch Whitworth, which is a one 15 out of 16 inch. So it's about 33 mil and so I've got a 33 mil socket here and hopefully this just I'm just gonna pop this on and I can I've got really good access uh-oh why what have I done so I ordered this 33 mil socket online but what I didn't check was the fact that what's that a one inch drive it's absolutely massive I don't have anything that's a one inch drive so although this fits on the crank bolt Oh. Okay, well I don't have any way of using that 33 really, so an adjustable? <laughs> can I get this? This is silly, this is silly. I think I can get that on there just enough. I mean, I'm gonna slice my hand off in the process, but. Okay, so I'm underneath the car with an adjustable. Please, 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 please don't be seized. I'll be amazed if this thing isn't seized. <sighs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, go. Oh. Okay, backwards. Can I go backwards? <laughs> yes! Is that moving? Did that just move? The tiniest bit. Okay, forwards. Yes! <sighs> okay, so it's moved ever so slightly. I've, I've sprayed a little bit more in there because the valves are going to be open differently now. So there's a little bit more penetrant in there. I think there's some kind of, there must be some kind of rust ridge that the rings are trying to get around. And so down here you can see there's just, I've, <laughs> I was doing it like this with this tiny little adjustable spanner on the, on the crank bolt there at this kind of angle as well. 
I just don't quite have enough leverage. So I'm just gonna try something different. Right, so what you can see I've done is I've got my 33 mil socket on there. And then I think the best thing that I can think to do is to jam, to jam this bar into <laughs> where the socket would go and see if I can get enough leverage just on this to turn the engine. Oh, oh. yes, 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 oh. yes, it's moving, yep, yeah. oh, oh, yes. Sometimes you have to just make do with what you've got. Yep. Yeah result okay so the engine <laughs> using one method or another has now turned over 360 degrees what an absolute relief and to be honest with you i'm frankly just gobsmacked that this engine turned over knowing that well i don't know how long this has been like this but knowing that is like that so what i'm going to do very briefly is i'm just going to see if it the engine just turns over using the starter motor now i'm pretty sure because this car I think has down there a dynamo rather than an alternator it means that this car's actually actually has a positive earth rather than a negative earth which is what pretty much everything from the mid to late 60s on had what your modern car has and we will dig into everything on this car i know some of you are dying to see inside and actually have a look around it and this car has actually got some really peculiar history and it's actually a bit of a frankenstein car any jaguar aficionados out there has already realized that firstly these cars never came with wire wheels which is a bit of a big deal and really eagle-eyed viewers amongst you will have noticed that this car's actually left-hand drive and also this car's got factory fitted air conditioning that hints towards where this car spent a lot of its life, which we will get into. But let's just spin this battery around so that we can get the positive earth right here. Oh, that's, that's good. <laughs> will you make enough of a connection on there for now? Okay, I managed to find the bolt actually hiding under the battery, but it still wasn't enough, so yeah. The car's not on fire. Now I've connected the battery, which is always a good sign according to the internet. I'm a little bit concerned because down there under the battery, I also found this, which looks like a bit of fuel pipe that probably connected to the carbs. There's this, there's this thing. <laughs> I don't half know how to pick them. Oh my word. Okay. okay. So on these cars as well, you have a, you have the starter solenoid down here. And then apparently you can push underneath and that's the same as turning the key in the ignition. So let's see what, if anything, happens. Ah! There's a starter there, just kicked off a bit of smoke. Oh, did you see that? Yes! Come on! I don't know what that was, it was puffing out of the cylinder head. Up, up, up. Dust? I don't know. A mouse house? Let's do it again. Okay, well it moves, it turns over, the starter works, that's great news. And the engine also appeared to be spinning in the correct way. So this car is without a doubt a positive earth car. Okay. I don't know where to go from here. Um, <laughs> okay, so now we know that the engine turns over, I think we need to address this whole carburetor inlet manifold situation that we've got. And I'm happy to report that the carburetors and the inlet manifold are in the exact place anyone would think that they should be. A perfectly normal place to put these components. Oh, every time I look in here, my heart just sinks a little bit. Ah, uh, so I don't know why they're in here. I don't know why they were removed from this car. I don't know anything about this car, really. The guy I bought it from um, pulled it out of a workshop in Yorkshire. Uh, it came to me without a logbook. Um, a logbook, if you're outside the UK, is the same as a title. It came with no other history whatsoever. But here you can see, shh, here are the carbs and the inlet manifold. But we've got all of this other just stuff going on. That, look, that's a float bowl for all the carbs. There's a bag here with float bowl bits in them. I mean, you'll notice straight away that this, you can see why that would have been removed. That's cocked off at that crazy angle. This must have been 
the lid for the SU carbs. I mean, I don't know if you can see that, but that's just bent beyond all recognition. And we've got this. I mean, what is that? Is that a, that looks like a, oh, I'll tell you exactly what it is, an electronic fuel pump that's not hooked up to anything. Got a piece of exhaust in here. We've got the float from a fuel tank. We've got some other fuel looking stuff. I mean, I don't know, what's that? S seals, an old belt. I mean, it's just, it's just absolutely abysmal. Oh look, that's actually a fuel pump that's very much still attached and plugged in. And obviously these cars didn't come with electric fuel pumps. They had mechanical fuel pumps. So this has been converted at some point. And what else is disappointing about this as well is that the fuel tanks sit in there. You get one in there and then another tank in there. They're obviously missing. So we, we, don't, have, we don't have any fuel tanks <laughs> for this car, which is just another fantastic thing. We've got headrests here for, I don't know what car they're even for. It's certainly not for this one. <sighs> and so having all of this stuff separate from the car does pose a couple of issues. So whenever who it was decided to take this out of the car, I, I, I've got a feeling that they, they, they went to break this car. They started to break it and then gave up because these components have been removed the same way that you'd find in a scrapyard. Everything's just been kind of cut unceremoniously. You can see we've got a load of the fuel pipes here. I mean, that's not, that's, that's still got the fitting on the end, but these, I don't know, just all of this stuff's just, it's not right. You know, the hoses have all just been sliced there. I mean, that's corroded, that's no good, is it? We're missing all of the linkage bit that actually connects this, this throttle thing here to the car. I'm not sure what's gone on here, but we're definitely missing parts. Hoses off there. You can see this has just been snipped. These cables, a load of them, some of them have got terminals on, some of that's just been snipped. We looked at all of this stuff, didn't we? The fuel filter's missing. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. I have, remarkably, got a set of keys, though, that work. So that's, that's one thing. But look at this, this is just in a complete mess. Look, there's the needle there for the carb, and I suppose that would have gone on there like that. That would have been under there, that. There's a hose, there's a fuel line missing from there to there just honestly oh, okay that's not too bad i've found i've just found in the boot there the fuel filter that's uh, i don't know i mean why has that been removed i just i can't understand what's happened anyway what we need to do is i need to kind of piece all of this back together now i have done a tiny bit of planning and i've gone ahead and I've managed to source some replacement parts for this so I managed to get a new float bowl off of eBay that's uh, that's second hand managed to get a new uh, bowl lid this was brand new I couldn't find a second hand one that was about 75 pounds <laughs> maybe even more money just for that uh, and I've already gone ahead and I've put in a new uh, new float needle um, and all of this gubbins that's all new I've gone ahead and I did that I did that a few weeks ago when I was bored when it turned up that's in there but this is obviously only one of three we've got we've got two more on here and I think this is an electric an electric choke I'm not sure but what I need to do right now is I think just kind of get this get this new stuff just assembled on here and then at least make this this assembly as whole as I can possibly make it
So that's all looking quite good now. So I've got a piece of fuel hose in there that connects this, this whole fuel rail uh, that supplies all of the float bowls. That's, that's in there, hopefully that's okay. I've got the new float bowl, new secondhand float bowl fitted there with the lid and with the, I think these are the overflow pipes. Um, that's all kind of connected. Uh, yeah. And so as you might have seen, I've done away with the, with the fuel filter there. Uh, only for only to make things a bit easier for myself and I've just installed the world's tiniest inline fuel filter onto the existing hose there well, I don't know I'm just going to try and make it work I can tell you that but before I do any of that look down here look you can see that this block here says 4.2 litre now anyone who knows anything about these cars knows that these early cars which this is this is a 1962 these cars came with a 3.8 litre engine. The 4.2 litre engine didn't get put into these cars until two years later in 1964. So that begs the question, how on earth has this car got a 4.2 litre engine in it? And the answer is, I've got absolutely no <laughs> idea. I don't know if the owner of this car at some point upgraded to the 4.2 for a little bit of extra performance. I don't know if the original 3.8 litre went bad and they replaced it with whatever they could get their hands on. And I can't even work out if all of these parts have been carried over. It meaning, so this is a 3.8 litre body. And I know that there's been some trickery that must have been done with the throttle linkage on here because all the body is a 3.8, but this stuff is, some of it's 3.8 and then I think the carbs as well are from a 4.2 so this doesn't quite marry up to the engine there must have been I don't <sighs> I don't really know to be quite honest with you it's <laughs> it's a real kind of Frankenstein hodgepodge of a car and then talking about Frankenstein hodgepodge of a car so I do have the heritage certificate for this and this car was originally opalescent green and it obviously very much isn't opalescent green look if you come right in here in the wheel well look, you can see the original color coming through there that you can see it on there this car very much was green so i don't know why it was spray painted this color and obviously you can see here this isn't very typical of the kind of wear you'd get out here in sunny old england i mean this is real that is real sun damage there and that kind of continues all around the car so you can see you've got a little bit of uh, a bit of rust there down at the doors that's not too bad all around there I mean this is all very 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 solid you've got some more paint peel in there it's very indicative of of uh, you know heat damage but nothing quite like these rubbers look at all of the rubbers on this car that's that's just where it's been absolutely scorched in the Sun it's the same here look on the windscreen absolutely crazy but it's all in quite good condition around the back actually it's not too Oh, hey Meg, how are you? Um, a bit more down there, look. I mean, it's not that bad. Yeah, look, rust again on the doors. I haven't really got underneath the car. Now, if we go inside, the first thing you're gonna notice, obviously, is that this is a left-hand drive car. And also the interior of this car, according to the heritage certificate, was also green. And the only indication that we've got that this was actually once green is that the seat belts remain in the original color. So I'm really, really struggling to work out, I mean, it was a lovely, lovely headliner there, really struggling to work out what on earth has gone on with this car. And you can see, look, Mr. Poopy Pants Mouse has been in here. There's loads of, loads of droppings in there that I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to get those out. This car has probably spent quite a lot of time in Texas. This is the vehicle registration. And from what I can work out by Googling it online, this was last registered in 2009 I think that's what that means and so I did actually manage to get myself a heritage certificate for this car and it states that this car went straight from the factory in England to Jaguar motor cars of New York and then clearly it's made its way to Texas and that is what I'm sure accounts for all of this sun damage but why was it spray painted this color why was the entire interior changed why was the whole engine changed I simply do not have these answers but this registration on there is the biggest clue we have as to how long this car has been sitting very much tallies with what the seller of this car told me in that this car was imported back to the UK in 2009 where it sat in a barn in Yorkshire and has then somehow ended up in my possession here in sunny Essex ready for me to try and get going once again yeehaw also check this out this has got to be one of the most American things that I absolutely love <laughs> we've got a CB radio in here 
and they look at all of this is everything's missing everything's just but we have got a cb radio bingo bongo howdy howdy partner anyone anyone at all okay so it's time to simply offer this all up and see if i can get it somewhat installed in here or <laughs> not even somewhat let's see if we can actually get it get it installed ha, yeah oh beautiful a washer for you a washer for you how do you get your fingers in there ah okay so that's all bolted on <laughs> getting some of these uh, nuts on was very interesting ideally you'd take you take this rail off but you can you can see where this has just been rtv'd well i don't know if you can but these that there that there that one there's been rtv'd a million times and i don't have gaskets for them so i didn't want to take this off to get better vaccine but and now it's a little bit clearer about kind of what goes where so i mean this this is the uh that's the automatic uh choke and you can see that that wire has been snipped from there i don't think you need this on to get this started i can probably just pin the throttle 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 <laughs> i could probably just pin the throttle open a bit more or something like that i don't know uh, there's a couple more wires here and uh, that looks like they join on to the rest of that it goes down there and there's uh there's this thing here that comes out of the out of the inlet manifold on the carb there and well i need to connect that actually and then that goes down there into the distributor that's some kind of uh that'd be a vacuum vacuum advance i think for the distributor there's this pipe here and that goes into the bottom of this thing so that goes this whole thing sits in there like that the air filter goes from there in there supplies air if you if that sounds like it you know i know what i'm talking about and you're thinking this guy clearly knows more than he's letting on. Um, I can assure you that is absolutely not the case. A lot of this is just becoming obvious kind of as you look at it, what, what might go where. I have never worked on one of these engines before. And to be honest with you, this is what's actually really helping me out. Obviously the service manual that I mentioned at the beginning, but also what I've got here, I've got the spare parts catalog for a 4.2 Mark 10. This is a reprint, but this has just got quite literally all of the parts of the car listed everything's got a number so you can just kind of look up what's what and then of course don't forget that i started this video off by saying if you're anything like me you've watched countless videos of your creators da, 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 da. i've watched loads and loads of those videos for real and you know i'm just kind of picking this stuff up from from those guys as well you know they're 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 amazing teachers really when you watch a lot of those guys um, in action and that's just where all of this is coming from. Thread you down there, and you, sir, can go into all the distributor cap. It is now the next day because, in true English fashion, 
all good. And just a quick note as well to say that this episode is not sponsored by anyone, but it is however supported by every single one of you guys who has been kind enough to buy a piece of merch, such as this. We've got sweatshirts, I've got hoodies, enamel mugs. You're the only mug around here, mate. Stickers. We've got t-shirts. Uh, there's a link in the description below if you want to buy a piece of merch. It's up to you. It really helps support the channel. And the channel is also supported by anyone who has bought a ticket uh, to win this Range Rover. If you're watching this video in May 2024, there are still tickets available. If you're watching this at any other time, still check the links in the description because I might be running a different competition when you watch this. So because uh, it is actually forecast to rain again, got a little bit of a setup just in the back of the Range Rover there so I can just scoot everything in there if the heavens do open. So what I've done here, following on from where we were, I've fitted a chunkier battery. I really need to sort out some of these terminals. I've got to work out, I've just put those on there. I've actually got to work out which, which is which. We can work that out uh, quite easily. So if I just switch on the ignition, come through the passenger side, which is a very odd feeling for me. It's supposed to be the driver side, guys. Um, let's just turn the ignition on. Oh, hello, what's that? fuel huh oh have i got something wrong oh no i think i've just made a discovery hmm i've been wondering this the whole time but i haven't hadn't delved into it so i said earlier on in the video oh god mr poopy butt has been everywhere it's just mouse dropping so anyway i'd said earlier in the video that this car had mechanical fuel pumps for the twin tanks i'm guessing now it didn't because if you look at this array of switches you can see that one there says fuel. So did this car then, for, I mean, that, that is factory. Did this car from factory actually have electronic pumps? Back in 1962, that's quite cool. <laughs> so if I just turn the ignition on, if I flick fuel pump, can we hear anything? Yes. Yes, can you hear that? It's probably hard actually with all the traffic going by. Listen. I can hear that in the boot, that electric pump. That's a result. We've got one working electric pump on the switch. Oh, that's fantastic. I wonder if any of this other stuff works. Wipers, do I dare? Oh, oh, yeah, that's broken instantly. Go down, thank you. <laughs> oh, good, well done me. So working out which plug is which on that coil should be as simple as I've got a test light here. So you connect this the battery and then i'm just going to probe inside what's it so the light came on there and then this the light shouldn't come on in this one yeah no light so that there is ignition so that attaches to terminal 15 on the coil which is the positive but then does it have to go backwards because this is a positive earth car it probably does isn't it that probably needs to connect to the negative and if you're wondering how i just knew all of that about the coil simple it's because i've got this book that i bought and you can get on amazon i'll put a link in the description it's absolutely fantastic and this textbook basically just describes the electronic systems of all cars and so i've just been reading this chapter on coils how they work how they're labeled Highly recommend getting that if you want to learn about electrical systems on cars. It's what I've just been using. <laughs> Look what I've just noticed. As I turned the ignition on, this car, believe it or not, it's 1962 car. This has got electric windows on all four corners. This one is actually going down. Um, that's quite impressive. It won't, however, go back up. So that's interesting. Not. Um, let's see if any of the others work. Drivers? No way! Oh, it's very slow. I imagine it's all gunked up and... Did it go back up? No. Oh, already wish I hadn't played with this. Okay, that's cool though. We've got electric windows. I'm sure that's not sapping much battery power right now. <laughs> okay, so what I've done in there, there's a... I found from the service manual, there's a relay in there that controls the windows. And I've disconnected it because I was testing battery voltage and there was a massive... There was a massive drain on the battery and it was... I was... I think it was because these windows were still trying to power down. This one's just stuck there. 
but it was it was desperately trying to go down and i think it was just causing a massive massive current draw on the battery so i've disconnected that and now i'm getting no draw on the battery which is which is a great start and then the next thing i want to do really quickly is this car has a plethora 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 pleth 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 plethora wow plethora a lot of vacuum lines just randomly dangling everywhere now i've just connected these up i've just connected them up i don't know where they go i don't know where that's supposed to go there's a t-piece there i found this bit dangling down there i don't know if that's part of it on there i can't find any anything in the manuals as to how these how these vacuum lines all all kind of connect together i think what i'm going to actually do is i'm just gonna i'm just gonna you know block off oh no i've lost one down there i'm actually just going to block off these vacuum lines temporarily it should be enough just to get the car started and then around here so this is obviously a mess that i'm going to have to sort out soonish as well but the, this is the braking system there you can see the the uh, cylinder master cylinder and then there's supposed to be a brake booster vacuum the vacuum bit that actually sits on here for you know servo assisted brakes i'm guessing that was the vacuum hose that goes into it. Now it's completely missing. So I bought these cheapo bungs off of Amazon and all I've done is I've just, I've just plugged, plugged those vacuum lines. There's a big blue one in that one there. I mean, technically you could just bung them with a screw, I suppose, or something, a bolt, but I had these, so that's what we're doing. So now all I'm really doing is I'm just working on the fund, I'm just, I'm just gonna try and work now on the fundamentals of fuel, air and spark now i think the chances that we're going to have fuel are high i can now hear the fuel pump running i haven't put anything any fuel through the system obviously no idea about the integrity of any of these connections this might all just absolutely spew fuel out once we get fuel up up to here and then into the bowls this whole system really now means we've got air so really the next thing to really actually properly test now is spark and so it's a cheapo spark tester from eBay. All I want to do here is just connect it in line to one of these plugs. Oh, they are awful. They are absolutely abysmal. I'll be amazed if they work. They're going to have to come out, aren't they? So I'm just going to push on that solenoid down there. Oh, I can't even get my hand down there anymore. Oh. And see if when we turn the engine over, if it turns over again, <laughs> see if we get spark in there. Hopefully I'm not like shorting myself out on there. <laughs> no spark ah right where to go from here backwards just backwards okay so just delving into my book a little more so i'm getting voltage to the coil we know that the ignition is on right now and i've turned the engine over just enough to open open the points down there so the points are open and then using a multimeter if i connect one to ground and then one to not terminal 15 but terminal one because this is backwards you should get battery voltage and we do look 12 point what's that 12.3 12.3 volts and then if i turn the engine over to close the points well I'm, <laughs> i can see a spark anyway so i think the condenser is probably working so if you do the same test the multimeter reads 11. <laughs> it should read zero so according to my trusty book if the points are closed and you can still you're still reading battery voltage it, it surely means then that the points the points need replacing also you're not apparently supposed to see a big spark traveling between the two points if you can it's usually an indication that the condenser is out so you know i said i'd loaded up the parts can in, in advance so i have gone and already ordered um, a contact point set I've got a condenser, I've got a Lucas rotor arm. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to replace, replace all this gubbins in there. I'm probably going to replace this distributor cap as well, because if you can see in there, that's, that's really quite gammy. There's a lot of corrosion on those points in there. I'm going to leave the leads for now because I don't want to have to make up a whole set of leads. I'm just going to, I'm just going to hope that that works. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's the condenser off. Then just in with the new set of points. This has got to be the fiddliest job <laughs> you can ever possibly do. These screws are tiny. 
Get in there. Get in, please. Please, no. <sighs> okay so that's new points and a condenser installed i hope i've set the gap somewhere somewhere close i don't have any feeler gauges i've used a <laughs> I've used a business card so that's all set and then you can see that the cam is on the lobe is on the high part of the cam the points are open and then with the points open if i come in here and test you should get battery voltage Yep, and then if you rotate the engine and close the points, hopefully the same test, hopefully should show zero or, you know, very close to. Please read zero. 200 millivolts. I'm calling that zero. So that's fantastic news then. That means that the points are working. I know for a fact those points are good now. Um, so I could have sworn, I could have absolutely sworn that I'd bought a new distributor cap, but I haven't. <laughs> so I've ordered one of those as well. That's also hopefully coming tomorrow. Uh, I am just gonna stick this straight back on. I don't think it's gonna work, but I'm gonna stick it straight back on and we'll just test for spark again. Um, and then if not, then I'll try and clean this up a little bit. Don't know, see how that, <laughs> just kind of see how that, how that treats us, shall we? And then I've got my, my new rotor cap there. Lovely. Let's get my hand down there and see if we've got any spark. We've got spark. Yes. Okay, this is fantastic news. I wasn't expecting there to be spark. If I'm completely honest with you, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna tidy up the inside of that distributor cap anyway, just to make sure that the spark is strong. I'm just gonna get a little bit of very low grit sandpaper. I'll find some in a sec, um, and just try and clear that up. Well, so I didn't mean low grit, I meant high grit. <laughs> so that's the distributor cap all cleaned out inside. It came out quite nicely. So spark, yes, air, yes, fuel. Now, let's not forget that this car did not come with any fuel tanks. So what I'm going to do is something relatively ropey. What I've got here is a boat tank that I bought off of eBay. Yeah. That's tougher than it looks. And it's come with all of these, these fittings. So proper fitting coming out of there through its own hose with that on it. Attached to this old <laughs> thing that must have been in the fuel tank. Connected to another rubber hose. Connected to this electric fuel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've seen... I've seen less gnarly fuel systems. Is that on there properly? Go on, pig. Yeah, I'm just gonna assume it is. And then, so the question I've got really at the minute is, so this electric pump, I'm hoping, isn't so strong that it overwhelms, you know, the floats and the, the needles and stuff in the carbs. Now, my my hunch or my or what I'm hoping is that the previous owner, whoever fitted this system, you know, fitted it correctly and it actually pairs well with these carbs. But I suppose there's only really one way to find out. I mean, I've got all the overflows <laughs> connected. They just kind of fall out to open. So I think there's nothing for it but to fill, fill the tank with some fuel. Then I'm going to switch the fuel pumps on and basically see we want to see if we get we get fuel into that filter i'm kind of making this up as i go along but it sounds right in my head right so what i am going to do now is i'm just going to use this just to prime a little bit into into the pump maybe i don't know how far forward i can send it okay that much I don't know. Let's go with yes, because a load of fuel just came, is in the filter there. So I think what I'm gonna do is turn the ignition on. I'm gonna turn the fuel pumps on. And then can I try and start it? Should I just try and start it straight off the bat? Take that off. Put my spark plug back on. There's no way, surely this thing's gonna start. Okay, so connect the battery the battery to gear four turn the fuel pumps on okay i can hear it pumping and i can see fuel absolutely pouring 
out of there. No, that's no good. Hmm. As I expected, there's just fuel just came pouring out of every orifice available <laughs> on these carbs. So it was pouring out of it was pouring out of one of the overflows. I couldn't see which one. Okay, so there was fuel pouring out of this one and this one, not this one. This is the new uh, float fuel bowl thinger. Right, so I was just checking out the fuel pump to see if there was some kind of adjustment on the pressure, but I can't see it. I've pulled the rail off down here. All three bowls are obviously getting fuel if it's leaking out the way it is. So I'm not sure how to slow, slow the flow down, but I think maybe if I just try restarting the engine, if the ignition is on, I've got the fuel pumps off. So there's kind of fuel in the system is what I'm thinking. I'm hoping enough might have evaporated out of it. If I just try cranking it a few more times and here's my throttle control and just see what happens, I think. <laughs> Yeah, nothing's gonna happen. What? Yes, I cannot believe it. That is rough. I cannot believe it's running. I cannot believe that is running. I've turned the fuel pumps on. Woo! Right, shut it down. No way! I did not expect that. I did not expect that. Can you believe that? For the first time in what I think is 15 years, this engine just ran. Barely, barely ran but ran. I mean, it was sounded like it was missing, like there was no tomorrow. It's probably gonna be those spark plugs, isn't it? I'm gonna have to take those out. I cannot believe that. Well done, old girl, well done. That's just made my day, that has. I don't know where to go, what to do, what to look at, what to see. So let's, let's change these spark plugs out. Um, the problem is, is look, so you can see down there, there's a load of liquid build up. That's, that's water. So water's getting in here somehow. I mean, so you can get in there anyhow. But look at all that, all that dirt and grime. You know what, shall I, shall I just try and start her one more time just because that was so fun. <laughs> Fuel pump's off again because it's just, it's, the flow's way too strong still. That's still something we've got to sort out. Maybe I could put another filter in line. Would that help slow it down a bit? Also, this is just gonna backfire in my face, isn't it? Straight up. That just started straight up. Fuel pump, should I turn the fuel pump on? I cannot believe it. I've got no idea if there's coolant in this engine. That's unbelievable. All right, turn the fuel pump off because I can see it leaking. We're gonna go burning off a load of a load of old junk as well. What have we got at the back? It's gonna cut out in a sec, isn't it? Look at that bit of smoke. Yeah, there she goes. Tiny bit of smoke. <laughs> this is the most fun I've ever had. So it's a couple of days later because yet again we had untold amounts of rain. Luckily I had this cover because obviously <laughs> the windows are still down. 
in an ideal world, what I am hoping for is that a load of that penetrant that you saw me spray into the tops of the cylinder head there where the spark plugs were, I'm hoping some of it isn't there anymore. Hoping the levels have dropped, which should mean that some of that penetrant has actually gone down past or gone down through the threads of the spark plugs. I'm not hopeful, but in an ideal world, that's what's happened. Mm, no, I don't think so. <laughs> it was never going to, was it? So there's still quite a bit of that penetrant all just still sitting there. Maybe some has gone past, I don't know, but I'll be honest with you, I'm really, really dreading taking these out. Please, please. So I'm randomly just choosing this one here in the middle. Just mop up a little bit of that penetrant there just so it doesn't completely flood the cylinder. If I do manage to get this out. Whew. Okay, here we go. Do I just lean on it gradually or do I bah, 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 give it a shock? Oh, I'm just gonna lean on it a bit. Oh, that just went. <laughs> much ado about nothing that's a complete result that is an absolute result yes <laughs> right so this is what we're dealing with you can see the load of sludge came out on that thread those spark plugs i mean are they a bit a bit rich maybe i don't i don't know too much they don't look too bad however they're out they are horrendous what are they champion champion spark plugs i'm pretty sure i've got direct replacements for these but i'm just going to go through now <laughs> hopefully they're all as easy as as that just was uh, oh <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> just a little bit stiffer <laughs> one more, one more. <laughs> oh, what a result. And now the spark plugs are out, I can actually get into this lower bit and clean it out and just look at all the gunk in there. It's just one sneeze away <laughs> from falling down that bore. It's just, all of them are like it. So this is basically a game of operation. Trying to get all of this gunk out. Don't go down the ball. Unsurprisingly, this is a much better way of doing it. so they're all they're all nice and clean now in there there was just so much gunk in there i can't believe it oh it was uh it was, it was a lot when you come and take a look at the spark plugs here you can see i've just numbered them all of the i mean all of the tips of the spark plugs look kind of the same to be honest with you they're all about the same amount of black <laughs> i think that means are they running rich obviously you can just see the actual these these parts of the spark plugs these ones are at the front were way worse these three one two and three that was where most of the corrosion is and this stuff look it just peels off it's it's absolutely abysmal look at the difference <laughs> and there we go all the plugs sitting pretty in the cylinder head there i bought this kit this is basically one continuous high temperature spark plug lead you've got your six acorn nuts and then of course i've got in here six brand new like for like champion caps lead things that go on the spark plugs you know so just like i did with the coil to the distributor i'm going to chop all this up into the relevant lengths i'm basically going to pull one plug off at a time and then use it as a template and then and then refit them
Okay, so that's all done. I just rinsed and repeated for the other five cables. So I've now got a new distributor cap, new leads. I mean, I've rooted them up through there. It came with this kind of sheath. <laughs> I've rooted them up through there in between those two hoses. I've got no idea if that's where it really goes. It probably goes around, I don't know. But new lead, uh, the what's it? With the, with the word champion on them, new spark plugs. That's all in, fairly neat. And I'm just going to assume I've got spark. That's probably not the wisest decision. Who am I to just assume I'm gonna have spark after doing that work, but I'm going to. And what I wanna turn my attention to next is the fact that when you turn that fuel pump on in the boot, this carb and this carb, the overflows, well, fuel is pouring out of the overflows. There's one, and then there was a, there's another one down there. Now this one didn't, and I don't know whether you've ever done that thing where you're working on a project car, and the second you get into bed, rather than going to sleep, you just think about all of the things that could possibly be wrong with it. In one of those moments, I thought, oh yeah, wait, hold on a sec. This one isn't leaking because this is a replacement bowl and lid and a replacement needle and seat and all the gubbins in there. So this one, the, the float and all of that stuff is probably working perfectly to actually shut off so it doesn't actually get, you know, more fuel, too much fuel in here to overflow in the first place. I've not actually really checked these two to see what condition the floats are in, to see if the needle valve things are blocked or anything like that. So I think that's what I'm going to do first. And then I was kind of just looking for information online about that uh, fuel pump that's in the boot and apparently they are actually made for carburetted cars it's very low pressure i think it was between one and four psi i'm just going to assume that it does its thing and it was always doing its thing and it wasn't an issue so i'm going to say the pump is okay for now okay so i've pulled both of the lids off there this is the lid on the front carburetor so what i've done is i've just disassembled it there, they're the parts. And then I've just sprayed a load of brake cleaner um, through there because you can get you can get dirt and stuff in there apparently. And you know, these then don't seat properly and all of that kind of gubbin. So I've cleaned that out. I mean, when I was laying in bed thinking about this, I did actually order kind of a new kit that comes with a new one of those because these tips wear out apparently. And then what I've got here is just obviously some water there in a in a jar thing. And then these are the floats, and as you can see, that floats a lot. So these can leak, apparently, and then they take on water, and then obviously they don't float, but that's very, well, both of them are very, very floaty. And they don't take on any water whatsoever, and then we leave them a shake. There's nothing in there either. Actually, you know what? So I've just, I've fully cleaned this out and I've reassembled it and I hope you can see this but look you can see it just keeps sticking this bit in the middle there look that's sticking and then this is the other one and this is uh well it's playing ball now but <laughs> you have to believe me this one has been has been sticking too. I'll have an early lunch or something wait for these new ones to turn up and then just fit them in there's no point putting them back on the car and then having to take them straight back off again and you know having issues with it while it's you know it's just i can't see i can't see the point right just turned up a moment ago let's have a look at what we got and i don't know if i've mentioned it at any point but these are hd8 su hd8 carburetors they're the same ones that you find on the early e-types or the what do you call them in the states What's an E-type in the States? What do they call them? We've got, um, we've got special guests. Are you smiling? <laughs> what are they called? What's an E-type? Just more out of self-interest at this point, because I know there's a hundred of you screaming at the screen. XKE. There we go. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's on the tip of your tongue. Yeah, it's on the tip of my tongue now. <laughs> okay, so that's the new bit fitted. And you can see that's what we're aiming for. Look, it's really moves perfectly with the float thing and what's it? Oh, I haven't got the terminology. The baby's crying. I've been left alone. Like I'm not thinking straight. I'll be there in a minute. Uh also put a new paper gasket uh, on the bottom. Yes, yes, I'm coming. 
What's up, lad? You all right? What's the matter? Come on. Just don't tell mummy. Daddy's got slightly dirty hands. She will kill me. Do you want to see a Jaguar Mark 10? This is what I am. Uh, this is what I'm currently trying to bring back to life. Look. What do you reckon? Do you like it? Those things there, they're carburettors. That's the battery there. And I'll tell you what, in a few years time, you can come and help me. Because I can get your tiny little hand into all the gaps that I can't get into. What do you reckon? What have you got to say about that? Also, I'm pretty sure you're supposed to have a hat on, aren't you? <laughs> Again, don't tell mummy. Right, where were we? Okay, so looking at all of that, that's all back together now. And I think there's nothing for it, but to try, to just to try starting again. Basically see what happens. I'm dying to know what happens when I turn this fuel pump on and see, well, just to see what happens basically. <laughs> Bark, battery, oh yeah, connect the battery. That would be a good start, wouldn't it? Okay, fuel pump on. I can hear it. What can I see? Okay, I'm just gonna go for it, see what happens. the starter motor not happy Okay, that's my big problem there. I've got fuel leaking out of that middle carburetor now. That one has stopped. That's not good. But... No smoke whatsoever. <laughs> That is the most satisfying thing in the world. That's not. I've got to work out what on earth is going on there. Okay, things have escalated <laughs> somewhat. So I've ended up basically pulling most of this carb apart. Uh, the top part, which didn't actually end up needing to come off, and then the bottom part under there. Um, because I can't take this off. These nuts and that um, thread, this all stuck together. I couldn't can't take that off so I've had to just it took forever basically to get my hand under there and disassemble the bottom of the carb but anyway look I've found I've found the issue this is the diaphragm that sits in the bottom of the carb like that it's the jet it's where the the needle goes into there it sits there like that this is just degraded this so this is rubber I, I suppose and it's just degraded enough where I hope you hopefully you can see that there's a tear basically and that's where all that fuel is just absolutely pouring out of now the really irritating thing is that it's friday today i've missed the shipping windows for absolutely everything everywhere appears to be closed all weekend i'm going to order one anyway and that can still turn up on tuesday but i just thought you might find it interesting just pure curiosity to know that an ls would fit in here i mean i'm just i'm just saying i'm just saying you know i mean if you were going to do it to a car it'd be this one because it's already a frankenstein kind of car it's got the wrong engine in it it's got the wrong interior it's got the wrong outer color i'm just i'm just throwing it out there that's all i'm saying and another reason it'd be good to put a v8 in this car if you were so inclined is because basically this car was designed to take on the American market. It was incredibly unsuccessful at doing so. In fact, this car hardly sold any models really anywhere in the world. It was, it was unsuccessful everywhere. It was unsuccessful here in the UK and in Europe because it's so big. This car is absolutely ginormous. This car actually held the record for being the widest production car 
right up until modern times. I think it was just pretty much one of the most recent BMW 7 series that is actually wider than this by about half an inch or something. It's gargantuan, it's just way too big for, for our road. So they designed it to take on the American market, but at the time, so this is a 1962 car, I think they came out in 61, um, at the time, you've got to think what was happening in America. You know, there was a big push towards the V8s, the muscle cars. And so with this uh, straight six XK engine, it just, it just didn't, capture, didn't capture hearts and minds over in the States like they were hoping. So just kind of on that note, I think it'd be cool to, I'm not saying I'll do it. I'm, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it'd be, it would be cool if there was a V8 in one of these because basically that is the car that is the car that Jaguar should have produced in the first place and who knows if they did release this car with a V8 it might well have broken America which is actually ironic as well isn't it because this car <laughs> this is an American car this is from the States so the next thing I just want to turn my attention to is if I want to drive this car down the road we need some kind of brakes now the vacuum there's a vacuum um, assembly that goes on here and attaches to this. So this is attached to the brake pedal. Um, we're not gonna have any, any servo assistance today. Um, I'm talking to someone about a second-hand uh, assembly. They want about 100 pounds for it and it looks incredibly broken. As this, someone's already been in here, obviously, and have disconnected, have disconnected this. Maybe there's a problem with the brakes and they got halfway into the job and then again, just decided, decided against it. There's another, master cylinder down below it that's for the front brakes that's all still connected so i think actually we're going to be good all i need to do really is i'm just going to bolt this master cylinder back up there because actually getting in there to take it off of there is a, is a massive pain so i'm just going to fix that down <laughs> we need to get some brake fluid into the system i mean if you look in there that's that's all pretty horrendous that's all pretty horrendous in there so maybe i need to kind of take all of this apart clean out clean out the bottle and then i'm going to need to get down to the calipers i'm going to have to see if we can get any kind of pedal see if we can bleed the calipers and i suppose it's we need to deal with these wheels now i've pumped up or well, attempted to pump both of these fronts up multiple times they go straight down so i think they've got tubes in them as well so I think we should, let's get that rectified as well. So just have to remove these spinners. <laughs> How many people just went ah. You have to use a softer form of persuasion, darling. <laughs> ah. Who put this pallet here and completely neglected to cut any of this grass? It was me, wasn't it? And so earlier on, I said it was significant, the fact that this car has been converted to wire wheels. And that's because these cars never came with wire wheels from the factory. And in order to put wire wheels on this car to begin with meant, means that someone would have been in here and converted the whole hub assembly. Oh, I didn't lift the car up high enough. <laughs> which just further amplifies the Frankenstein nature of this car. Does this spin? Oh no. I should have spun it with a wheel on. Ah, <laughs> oh, there we go. Lovely. Quite a bit of, there's still quite a bit of pad material. And what's really good is that this Flexi still looks in fairly good condition. And look, unlike a lot of classic cars, that's not rotted out at all. So if I even needed to change that Flexi, there shouldn't be too much of an issue. Right, I'm gonna pull the other side off and let's go and see if we can get these tires sorted out. Okay, things have escalated and you're gonna to have to forgive me for not filming it. Both sets of neighbors decided that they were gonna do an intense amount of gardening, so we had two lawn mowers, a strimmer and a hedge trimmer all going at the same time. So I've spent just a little bit of time trying to deal with the brake situation. And this is where we are. I've actually had to pull out the, this whole, the whole assembly there just to try and work out what on earth 
what on earth is going on? And so I can see why somebody began messing around with this. So the issue I was having is that that's all the brake travel you get. And that's because the bottom master cylinder there is loose, but the top one isn't. So you can see someone tried to take that off, thought, oh, I don't know how to do it. Basically, you have to get at it from underneath. So I can now, I can now get in there and remove both of these master cylinders. And you know what, I think, get in there. I don't think this, this other master cylinder is looking, is looking too healthy at all either. And I don't think it's supposed to be that free. I think both of these master cylinders are completely and utterly shot. So it looks like I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to buy two new ones of them if we want any hope of ever, ever going down the road in this thing. Got in here amazingly, I can't believe it, but these fittings, they just came out nice and easy. No snapped pipes or anything. That was, that was a real surprise. However, it's a little bit, a little bit of a different story in, inside here. So you have to get right underneath underneath here to get to to get to all of that but I mean I think you just saw it so uh, you know I was very carefully just trying to peel down the wood that was in this section up there and it's just absolutely gone all of this wood is just it just came away literally in my hands like that it's so brittle and just probably just a bit rotten so that does put a little bit of a spanner in the works i'm now gonna have to wait for those little bits to to turn up i shall i shall order them up let's reconvene in a few days when i've got some parts ah so it's another new day we have the same outfit the same problems but we do have some parts so i've got myself some new master cylinders some brake pipe got a load of brake unions and stuff in there which now means we can just sort this whole issue out so I'm going to remove these master cylinders set the new ones up put them in and I think I'm also going to replace definitely this bottom brake line for the front reason being is that the new master cylinders these connections they don't fit the new master cylinders I'm not entirely sure what size these are but because it's really tight in there the way the hose is kinked around and getting a new flare tool in there to make new ends. This, this is the front here. So that goes from there, travels down there, and then it, it just ends there in that three-way piece. So I think I'm just gonna pull that whole pipe out because it's only a short length. I'm just gonna remake it because that'd be way easier. I think this one though, this is the rear. This just disappears straight off into, well, over there and then somewhere. That's a way more complex piece of pipe. So I think I am going to cut this off probably about there and then just fit in a new length of pipe with the correct end on. I think that's probably the best way to do it. This is going to need a new end because this is the one that was disconnected the whole time and those threads are, they've completely gone on there, even, even if that fitted anyway, which it doesn't. So that end's got to come off. So this is a bit of a, this is going to be a bit of a task getting all of this done. I'm just going to have to kind of just crack, crack right on with it.
you go, there's my thousandth attempt at a double flare. <laughs> but I think that, uh, that should work. Okay, would you like to see my braking system? I'm quite pleased with it. So I won't lie to you, this took me a good few hours to say the least. This is what we're working with. You can see here, we've got two new master cylinders installed. All of this assembly is back together in the car. The brake pedal re return spring is actually hooked up. There is no fluid in this system just yet. I'll get onto that in a second. Uh, let me explain quickly what's gone on with all of this pipe work. So I needed new ends on both of the, both of the lines into the master cylinders. Here's one of them. Now, I'm not sure what was up with this, but this doesn't fit in these master cylinders. It fits in the old ones perfectly fine. But these, these master cylinders, they're imperial, and they're imperial fittings. I don't know if someone has um, modified the old ones, but anyway, that wouldn't go. And I don't know where it's gone, but the other fitting, the one that was loose the whole time, that was so corroded that I needed to put a new one in there. So. That's why we've got this. These are actually metric, by the way, because <laughs> that's all I had. So I've reconnected a new line there, new fittings, new everything there. You can see there as well, this is actually quarter inch pipe here. This is the low pressure side. This is new hose that goes into the fluid containers. I've cleaned the fluid containers out as best I can. They've both got the gauze in still, and the gauze, they're, all, they're both doing gauzy things. So that's looking all nice. You can see there's another, there's another straight pipe connector there for the front brakes here what i did say to you was i was just going to put in a whole a whole new length of pipe but this fitting here would not come out of this union it was so strange so it undoes but it just won't come out so i had to keep <laughs> i had to keep that end on so that's why i've ended up having to cut that pipe halfway along as well and then add add a new bit in because I simply could not remove that fitting so it took me a little while but we are there and to be honest with you doing brake lines and all this sort of brake stuff it is a real faff and it can be really finicky um, especially doing all the different flarings look I mean here's some of my <laughs> here's some of my practice runs and also my failures where I'll just keep having to do the flares again and again so for the double flares for the imperial stuff I was using this tool anyone who's ever used one of these tools know that they are just the fiddliest, the fiddliest of things. These are the two master cylinders that were on the car. As you can see, I mean, look, that's got absolutely no resistance to it. And then this one is just completely and utterly locked up. So they are properly done in for. And they do look like these are the original Dunlop master cylinders. So yeah, I don't know if someone re-tapped these threads or something to, to receive a different fit in. Oh, look, there's my corroded one. I tried to clean it up a bit, you know, with a wire brushing that it. it was having none of it whatsoever. What I do need to do now is to put brake fluid into the system and bleed the brakes. Now, miraculously, I have just tried on both sides of the front, the bleed nipples, they're loose. They, they just, well, they just came loose. So I'm gonna give this a go. This is gonna to have to be the old fashioned method. I'm gonna to have to pour, pour brake fluid in and then I'm gonna see if I can get the good lady to jump into the car and then you know with the with the old brake pedal while I go down there going ink, ink, ink. but even before I do that there is no way in a million years she's going to get in this car with all that poo in it so I think I need to do a little bit of vacuuming Okay, that looks a million times better just with a really quick vacuum out there that's uh, that's nice obviously you saw me there i've pulled out all of the headlining so that's just you know it's completely and utterly gone you know there it is there nothing nothing that can be done about that i need to scrape all the rest of the stuff off at some point but for our purposes right now that's okay like that 
Also, you saw me, you know, just cleaning out all of this stuff in here. Just a, just a really quick, just a really quick freshen up there. I'm just trying to minimise the amount of things that might catch on fire. Also, check this out. So right up until this very moment, I hadn't even looked in the back of this car. Look how much room there is. This is, you know, I'm, I'm six foot. I'm not the smallest of people either. This is just cavernous. You mustn't forget, you know, this car, like I said earlier, was designed to take on the American market and, you know, specifically things like, you know, the big Cadillacs. Oh, wow. Oh, <gasps> oh that's cool. That's properly cool. Has this ever been smoked in? Yes, sir, it's been smoked in. Oh, I really like this car. Look at this. <laughs> so all of that cleaning, my favorite task, and the missus is preoccupied with the baby anyway. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to try and do this myself. So all I'm gonna do is just, well, top this up with brake fluid. Is dot four gonna be all right in this? Hopefully there's no leaks in this system. I really hope there are no leaks. Let's give the brake pedal just a couple of pumps just to start getting some fluid moving. Let's see what happens. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> hmm. Come on, brake fluid. Get through there. Okay, so the problem I'm having is that there's brake fluid in here. The brake fluid level in here doesn't seem to be falling. <laughs> Basically, there's not brake fluid going from here into the master cylinder, which is mildly concerning because it's such a short little distance to travel. Is it because the entire system's just completely filled with air? So if I just cracked off this nut just to begin with. No. Oh good. What? Okay, update and it's not good. Let's just say that. Well it is, I know what's wrong, but more parts, more delays, more time. So I chased the well basically I just started undoing fittings and from you know from here just to make sure or to see where brake fluid was coming out of. It comes out of all of the fittings, absolutely fine. Then you come down here and you can see, obviously, look, it's pouring out of that one very easily. Where it's not pouring out of, however, is this front flexi here on the passenger driver's side, on the driver's side, and it's also not coming out of the flexi on the passenger side. <laughs> Uh, I've tried to blow, you know, like a load of brake cleaner and stuff down this hose. Maybe there was a, thinking maybe there was a blockage, but it's, I think this has uh, collapsed internally or the blockage cannot be removed. So at least I know my master cylinder works. You know, that's the trouble really around here is that there are, you can't just go to a regular car parts place and expect that they'll have, you know, imperial flexes on the shelf. They just, they don't. So I'm gonna to have to order one. Da -da 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 -da. I really wanted to get this car on the road today. That's so annoying. So I've just been on to a mate of mine, Alex, who is a classic Jaguar tech mechanic specialist um, who lives nearby. Uh, and I asked him, well, where, any idea where I might be able to get, get a set of these off the shelf? Do you know anywhere around it that sells them? He said, no, but I'm pretty sure that I've got a set of braided E-type front lines knocking around at home, I think, um, which is amazing. But he's got a set of those. That is really going to sort us out. But what I want to show you now, actually, is I want to delve back into this carb situation. So this is that middle float bolt, and something has been irking me really badly since I took it off. I'm just trying to work out what this whole kind of grub screw bit on the bottom is for. It's got a hole in it, and obviously that's where the fuel was pouring out. Now a hole in the diaphragm, you know, is gonna, is gonna, you know, do that, I suppose. But why is there a hole? I started looking at photos online, and I was like, I don't think there's supposed to be a hole there. This whole, that whole setup just looks strange. And uh, sure enough, here's a new one, not a new one. There's a second-hand one. 
look, it looks completely different. It's all blocked off. It's got this whole extra bit on the bottom. This is the exact same part number. So I just, I can't make sense of it. So these are 250 pounds new. <laughs> well, this one was 30 pounds secondhand on eBay. So I just snagged it up straight away. So I don't know, I don't know if something was supposed to be on the bottom there, or, but I'm not putting it back on the car. I can tell you that right now. And then so in here, I've got a brand spanking new diaphragm jet and a jigger thing so that goes on there like that i'm going to fit all this back up to the car in a fairly rudimentary way you know you can you have to center all the jets and the... i'm just going to stick it all back into the car and really we should be golden <laughs> right it's the next morning again it's a little bit soggy but that doesn't matter the show must go on so i just popped to see alex quickly and look what we've got some braided e-type lines they're second hand but absolutely no problem whatsoever and uh, he also had kind of a box of miscellaneous carb parts not only are there two more brand new jets there for the other two carbs if we need them but also look a couple of these a couple of these springs and i do need that i'd lost the one out of what i've got so that's absolutely spot on he didn't want any money for these parts either it, what an absolute lad. Uh, I ended up paying him with a pack of Belgian buns. <laughs> right, let's get this show going. Right, I'm gonna get all this stuff fitted up and see how far I get. Now I know exactly what you're thinking. You're thinking, hey, Nino, that looks like the whole pedal box master cylinder assembly thing out of the car again. <laughs> yeah, well, that's because it is. Honestly, I was going around the houses trying to bleed these brakes. Trust me, I did not want this to be out of the car. Let me show you something quick. So I fitted my new braided cables, which have worked fantastically. I'm, I can now get, or I was getting brake fluid out of the nipples on the calipers, on both, on both calipers. But no matter what happened, no matter how I tried to bleed these brakes, the pedal just stayed soft. It, it wasn't doing anything, it wasn't engaging anything. And then not only that, but the top master cylinder, this one here that does the back brakes, I wasn't getting any fluid whatsoever out of this hole. And it was driving me absolutely crackers. And I think I've worked out what's going on. So I was just reading the workshop manual for this and I came across just one sentence that talks about um, adjusting the push rod on here. One of these is threaded, as you can see there, and one isn't. So basically what's happened is, is that I've got these two master cylinders round the wrong way. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch these over, try and make sure that all this is adjusted, all this is adjusted properly, the brake pedal's all properly in the right place, put it back onto the car, and then try the whole process again. <laughs> I mean, it has to be that. It must simply be that. This braking system has been beating me about the head. Um, frankly, it is completely beating me at this point. It's so strange. I cannot get my head around it. Let me show you. So I've put all of this back together. Everything's great. But there is absolutely zero brake pedal. Take a look at this. So it's all set up. I aligned it all properly according to the to the manual. But there's just nothing there, right? But <laughs> but there's kind of no air in the system because I've tried bleeding it a thousand times. Brake fluid comes out of the bleed nipples on both front calipers there are absolutely zero leaks in any of these joints that i've got and when you open up these joints you can push brake fluid through just fine there's brake fluid coming out of all it there's brake fluid everywhere you expect brake fluid to be i just cannot get a firm pedal and then i realized something i was looking at these brake calipers and i'm thinking you know what they look like fairly advanced ish calipers for a car of this age and i know that all of this has been replaced anyway to have put spinners on are they even the original brake calipers and what do you know no they're not <laughs> i'll put on screen right now what the original brake calipers should look like now i'm not sure if this is a crazy theory or something but was somebody halfway through a brake upgrade on this car and then just kind of gave up are these master cylinders something like not strong enough to power 
these calipers. I do not know, I do not know. There's no brake fluid leaking out of those calipers, so I thought, oh, maybe the seals have gone. I mean, maybe the seals have gone, but I thought if a caliper seal had gone, brake fluid is gonna come out of said seal. That's, you know, that's how it works. Nothing's leaking, there are no leaks. I just cannot work it out, and I cannot work out what these calipers are off of. Are they off of a later E-Type? Are they off of a XJ6 or something? I would absolutely love to get your input. Write in the comments below what you think what you think has gone on here because it's absolutely just completely baffling me. In fact, I need a break from it, if I'm honest with you. What I have done in the meantime, because it was just driving me crackers, is I've, uh, I've reinstalled all of this carb. Now you can see in there, that's all connected back up. You've got that new jet in there, the spring. Yeah, I mean, I think that's good. So I have a little bit of a plan. Actually, I suppose now would be a really good time to see if there's any transmission fluid in this thing, wouldn't there? Indeed, enough. I'm gonna get this engine running right now. We're gonna put some wheels on it and I'm just gonna see with no brakes if I can drive this car just around this bit here and hope, <laughs> hope that there's no fuel that pours out of this carb. If I wanna drive this car, even up and down this driveway, I still need to hook up some kind of accelerator linkage thing. So this was a second-hand part that I had to buy from America. Um, it was about a hundred pounds. It's because obviously this car's left-hand drive. This is a, I'm pretty sure it's a left-hand drive specific part. It was the only one available is basically what I'm trying to say. That goes in there like that. I need to fit that in. And then this, this bit of linkage here goes into, goes into that. Now the only problem is, is that this linkage right there is too big for the hole. So I've, again, Mr. Frankenstein car, I don't know what's happened there. So I'm gonna try and enlarge that hole and see if we can get that rod in there to have, you know, to be able to operate this whole assembly there. And I've actually got a new bushing that goes in there. So I wonder if that can come out. Yes, result. Okay, so I'm just gonna press the accelerator pedal and hope that my rudimentary, very temporary solution works. Ah, oh, get in, what a result. Okay, it's nice for something to work. <laughs> Shall we treat her to a little bit of juice? It's gonna be pretty empty. Is blue the right color? Okay, now for the moment of truth to see if this Centre carb is kind of going to play ball with us or not. I really hope it does. Fuel pump on. What's happening? Anything? Hmm, no leaks. Shall I try the starter button in here? Hmm, interesting. I'm just going to do it from here so I can play with, play with the throttle here. Wrong side. Doesn't sound great. Cool, that was abysmal. Oh, and my accelerator linkage has come off. Right, you get back on there. Too much fuel, too little, too something, isn't it? Nothing for it but to try again. Oh, come on. The accelerator is stuck. Ah. That's riven so high. There we go. That all needs adjustment. Got a little bit of a leak out of the coolant there. All sorts of stuff burning off. <laughs> so I'm just wondering right now if I can just inch her forward ever so slightly. We have get a bit of smoke out the back now. What happens if I try putting it into gear? Ah!
my throttle's come off again. <laughs> That's awful. Everything about this car is utterly awful. And I love it. I truly love it. So much stuff burning off. I need a better solution to keep my accelerator linkage on. I just want to edge this car forward and I want to edge it back. <laughs> this is fun. What are we saying? What do we reckon? <laughs> this is one of those kind of, is it silly if it works moments? Yes, it's silly. But <laughs> let's give it yet another go. And I'm kind of just half hanging out here. Oh, the carpet is stuck behind the accelerator. Ah. It's a very high idle. Calm down. <laughs> Calm down, cat. Calm down, cat. Right, let's just see if we can move forward a little bit. This is pure chaos. <laughs> ah. Woo! Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Two and a half thousand RPM. Stop it! Calm down. She moves though. That's pretty cool. There's a bush, there's a hedge. <laughs> all right, old girl, all right. <laughs> <sighs> that hedge came at me pretty fast. <laughs> And so the answer to the question, can us regular folk revive an abandoned classic car? Yes, kinda. <laughs> so I think it's safe to say we've got a couple of kinks to work out with the old girl. Well done though, cat. I mean, she's burning everything off. The throttle is just sticking open. She's kind of idling at two and a half thousand RPM. So, I mean, I say this needs adjustment. This these carbs, they need, they need fully rebuilding. I think that is a job that I'm definitely gonna get into, by the way. I mean, I've refreshed everything else. We now know it runs, you know, the gearbox goes forward that much. Obviously now I've got to see if I can get this car to go back at some point. It sounds like she's missing a little bit, so we're gonna to have to do some timing work. She sounds like she's 100% got a hole in the exhaust. And I wanna tell you right now that you better believe, you better believe that this car is gonna go back on the road. I am gonna sort this brake situation out, but this is gonna to have to now be in another video. So please, I, I rarely ask you guys, please hit subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. And if you wanna catch this car on the road, we've got, I've got loads to do to it. This is gonna be a bit of a series. I'm already in love with Kat, she's amazing. This has been incredibly, incredibly fun. I absolutely love it. Let me know what you guys have been working on this weekend and I will see you in the next one. <sighs> right, how am I gonna get you back? Do I dare reverse into the neighbor's car at 100 miles an hour? Probably not. Pusher, you are on a slight incline. Maybe I could do that. Ooh. <laughs>